All right, uh, looking at to uh, looking at unit five, aqueous chemistry, and doing some more of the uh, molarity problems um, and utilizing the equation that we left off with on the previous video. Uh, and so we will continue on with uh, molarity. The first off, this is a slide where we left off last time, and we had two solutions that contain the same. What we're looking at um, is that we're looking at utilizing this equation here uh, a lot. Um, and there's another way in which this equation could be written out, and that is, uh, you'll probably see me writing it as capital M is equal to moles over liters, because ultimately that is the equation, is the number of moles over the number of liters. Um, like I had said in the pre previously that there's other ones called molality and uh, normality, but those aren't ones that we're going to really focus on or deal with. This equation the, that's written in blue you can is one that we'll use, and it's one that will, uh, because we can utilize it, and it makes it look a little bit nicer and uh, easier to deal with instead of trying to write out all those words uh, as we continue on and go through some of these problems. But ultimately, some in reminding of us of some of the things that we have done before, and that is converting between grams and moles. Uh, and that will mean that we will have to know the molar mass of the uh, compound. And uh, you can see that the uh, picture here they has a weighting out of about 39.9 grams of a copper 2 sulfate solution. Um, which would be the equivalent of 0.25 moles. And so what they're going to do is they're going to put that into uh, the volumetric flask. And the volumetric flasks are really nice because um, they will have a line on them. Utilize, usually that line is going to be uh, somewhere around here. And it's just going to be etched into the bottle. And it's going to tell you that it's an exact amount of uh, solution uh, and that one uh, looks to be maybe 100 uh, milliliters, which would be 0.1 liters. Um, and so what they would then be able to do is calculate out actually how much, uh, what the concentration of copper 2 sulfate that is. And uh, so you would take your 0.25 and divide it by 0.1, and that would give us your concentration. Now, now if it was a... Uh, 250 milliliter one, it would give us a one molar solution. Um, and so we have that, utilize those. Now, normally we would probably have you doing some of those, but a lot of times we use our solutions or we're going to do is we're going to, we would transfer a lot of that stuff into Erlenmeyer flasks, um, and especially for the high school chemistry class. And that's not ideal. It is not ideal at all because of just the error that is involved with uh, utilizing a Erlenmeyer flask as the housing unit. So a lot of times what we would have done is we would measure uh, utilizing uh, graduated cylinders or, and or pipettes and then add those to the uh, to the Erlenmeyer flask and just utilize the Erlenmeyer flask as a thing to mix or and or house the stuff. It's just because of just the how much uh, volumetric flask can cost and uh, the value in which they have uh, and if they break they are hard and they're also really hard to store uh, as well for a high school. A lot of uh, colleges will utilize these uh, much more frequently um, and as we continue on we'll find out uh, some other uh, methods that we can use as well. So let's try some of these uh, problems out. And uh, one of the first problems we deal with is going to have us remember, require us to remember how to calculate out our uh, molar mass um, because we have a what is the molarity of a solution if 40 grams of sodium hydroxide are dissolved to make one liter of solution. Um, because remember that sodium hydroxide is actually solid pellets 
uh, not as you've seen it in the lab up, up to this point, and that was as a solution where I've already actually dissociated this sodium hydroxide. So we have utilized some things in previous uh, units, and, and especially in unit four, where we talked a, at great length about when in doubt convert to moles. Because once you have something in chemistry and moles, you can pretty much do almost, it's, it's a kind of a do whatever you want and get away with it badge. Um, because the mole is a chemist's best friend and a lot of that comes from the simple fact that we convert to it. So we're going to remind ourselves on how to uh, convert that. And first we will calculate out our molar mass. And so I will need to find out how many sodium I have, how many oxygen, and how many hydrogen. And each of those um, are one, so I'm just going to forego multiplying by everything by one and just write their molar masses that I got off my periodic table. And if you're not sure about it, that's what it will be. And again, um, we use 15.99 because that's what Mastering Chemistry uses uh, for it. And we will find that our value is 39.99 grams per mole. So now I can start converting to uh, moles and that's going to be my first step. It's a conversion problem just like some of those other ones are that we've done before and then I'm going to take my 40 grams that I start off with of sodium hydroxide and I'm going to convert that into moles which means my grams goes on the bottom my moles goes on top and so I can see that 39 is that point nine nine is really close to 40. Um, and so when I do that calculation, we are going to see that I am going to have essentially one uh, mole. Uh, even with the rounding, you're going to have that. So now I have that. And so my next step is to again utilize big M is equal to M-O-L, mole, over liters. And so now all I have to do is take this value and put it underneath my one mole. So one divided by one is going to give me an answer of one molar solution. And so... Uh, there we would have it. Now, a lot of times these amounts could change, um, and we'll get into some more examples as well as we uh, continue on. The next uh, problem that we're going to do is the uh, what is the molarity of a solution if 30, uh, 3.65 grams of hydrochloric acid is dissolved to make uh, 250 mils of solution? No, normally you're not going to do this. This is a dilution problem normally. Um, so regardless of the bad write-up, we'll just work at, with it as how we're supposed to actually solve it. And that's what we're going to focus on in doing is making sure that we're doing the work correctly. We're going to calculate out our molar mass. And again, we're just dealing with one of each. So I'll have 1.01. .01 and 35.45 and then it would give me 36.46 grams per mole so again converting this all out um, I'm going to need my 3.65 grams of hydrochloric acid Finding out how many moles, because the only way to do find this is to divide moles over liters. And so I need to find the number of moles. And so that's what we do. We take our 36.46 grams over one mole and so we have those 
and that will give us a value of about 0.1 mole. But now I have to take this 250. Now a lot of times this is where errors uh, happen and that I need to convert 250 milliliters into liters. And so we need to make sure that we do that properly. Uh, some of you will be able to do this in your head and actually you'll probably be doing this in your head very quickly um, just because of the simplicity and how much you're actually doing this. Converting between milliliters and liters is going to be something that uh, will start to become quite natural the more you do it, as we've always seen. Dividing by a thousand is the same as moving the decimal place a few times over, and so we get a 0.25 liters. And so that's where I put that value at, to five liters. And what I find then is my answer ends up being a value of a 0.4 molar solution of hydrochloric acid with that. A reaction calls for 0.5 moles of sodium chloride and how many milliliters of a one molar solution do you actually need to add? Um, it's a little bit different, kind of introducing a, the, a potential of a uh, type of uh, problem which would be a titration problem. But this is another one of those ones where we utilize this as our equation as our moles is equal to uh, molarity is equal to moles per liter. If I utilize that as the equation, I have stuff. And algebra works because uh, we have two, two knowns and only one unknown. So it's not like calculus where you have can have more than multiple unknowns. We're going to use this and we're going to actually just, I'm just going to literally plug things into this equation and say one molar let's even i'll even try to keep it up with the, the same colors that we've been using and say one molar is equal to and it would have been 0.5 moles and the actually of the what it is the sodium chloride doesn't matter in this point because we're not asked to find that how many grams or anything like that so the the compound itself actually doesn't matter. And I'm asked to find liters. Well, I would need to multiply both sides by L. So you get L by itself. Okay. And then I'll end up finding, and that will cancel our L's out there to make it by one. And therefore I have L and molarity and I need to then give L by itself, so I divide both sides by M, and so I will end up having the equation of 0.5 moles divided by 1 molarity, and well, 0.5 divided by 1, hopefully you know what that one is, and that's going to give you the fact that it will be 0.5 liters, which... Again, I need to convert that to say that it is 500 milliliters um, as well. And so not too difficult. I think it's just you, knowing that we can utilize this as an equation as well as a what, what do these values mean is we can utilize both. And I think that's kind of something important uh, moving forward uh, with this type of stuff. And the last example um, in a titration, which is something that we will do eventually in the lab, uh, you have added 46.2 milliliters, that's a lot, usually you don't add that much, of a 0 0.099 molar sodium hydroxide solution uh, to neutralize uh, a solution of hydrochloric acid. Uh, how many moles of sodium hydroxide did you add? Because this reaction is actually one-to-one, -one, it will actually even tell you how many moles 
of hydrochloric acid are present. Um, and you would be able to find more and more information on that. And we'll get into some of those examples, but let's just, let's just worry about this one for now. Again, utilizing my uh, molarity is equal to moles per liter is kind of a way to calculate this out. I'm going to, again, substitute things in as just if it was a calculation, because I'm not asked to find how many grams, although we'll add it on at the end just for fun, because that's what we do. We have that. We're actually asking to solve for molarity, or the number of moles, sorry, molarity. Uh, not the molarity, but the number of moles. And we are given, and this one is a little bit trickier of a calculation, but it is a very small number. Because again, usually a titration is done with a burette, and uh, that usually then requires, uh, they're only, most burettes only go to about 50 milliliters. Um, so they're getting off subject, but that's why it's such a small number. And we would move the decimal place again, three places. That's where I came up with that number. Um, to get moles by itself, I need to multiply, <laughs> multiply, it's always a thing. Um, by four, by the values, and that should give me my value that I need to find, and that I will find that I have a very, very small number of moles, and I have a value of four, five, seven moles, which is also roughly, if we want to stay with this proper number of significant digits, 0 0.0046 moles. Now, if we remember, we should be able to actually calculate uh, the number of grams that is by converting from grams to mol uh, moles to grams, utilizing the molar mass. And now we've calculated the molar mass earlier, and so we would actually just take that value, and this is just, it's not something that's added on, but just a reminder of that you can do this. Um, and then you would just find and calculate out your molar mass, which again is roughly 39.99. Again, utilizing a calculation we have done earlier in, in the video. And we would see that those cancel out and that my uh, total number of grams is very small, uh, and it would be 0.18 grams of sodium hydroxide was added uh, for that. Um, and so what we have here is kind of reminding us of some of these calculations, that they're not overly difficult, um, I think, but we have seen through time and time again, if we, it's practice, practice, practice to really kind of solidify some of these things and that um, when in doubt, convert to moles and uh, utilizing this is the equation that we're going to have uh, and do a lot of problems with. Uh, we will add another problem, another equation in the uh, next time. And so we will see kind of how this, uh, how far this goes uh, when we continue farther. In. This will open up a number of uh, different problems on mastering chemistry, and you should uh, look into adding those into your uh, practice as we uh, continue on.